One of the narratives about 9-11 is that it radicalized many people. However, this was not the case for Mubeen Sheikh. On this NSP short, he shares how that day had the opposite effect on him. I was working for the uh, Student Loan Center. Okay? And uh, heard on the radio, plane hit the building. And honestly, my first initial reaction was, Allahu Akbar. Now, that can mean two things. That can mean, all right, Allahu Akbar. Or that can mean, oh no, Allahu Akbar, like, oh God. I'll be honest, it was a bit of both. It was a bit of both. Hmm. Because America, the evil, they got what was coming to them, Some, you know. But then, as the day went on, I realized, this is not good. Um, I went home for lunch, and my wife is watching TV, and it's all, it's all over the news, and, uh, and she even says to me, she's like, uh, half joke, she's like, you sure you don't have anything to do with this? Because like people are calling us, asking about you. Oh, really? Why were they doing that? Because they knew my mentality, right? They knew where my, my, my headspace was at. And, uh, so, and then later on uh, that evening, I went to see the, the bad friends, if you will, and they were celebratory. So when people say it's a myth that Muslims were celebrating or some Muslims were celebrating, it's not a myth. It is absolutely not a myth. Maybe what somebody said, one guy said, in the media about he saw Muslims celebrating in New Jersey. I don't know how true that particular statement is, but it is true that there were Muslims celebrating in the U.S., in Canada, in the West. Like, fact. I can tell you in Toronto because I was a part of it. I wasn't celebrating it, but I was there when others were celebrating. Right, you were witness to it. The white guy, Muslim convert, who was in the circle was like, yo, what the hell is going on? Why are all these cab drivers honking their horns and like, and like they won a soccer game? Like he was like WTF, like what is this? Like, is this what you guys believe? Hmm. So, and so this started to weigh on me too, right? That like, how could you, how could they come up with something like this? Like I was supporting the Taliban, I was supporting these groups. When Osama bin Laden came up with his fatwa in 1998, I read that fatwa, I was there. We talked about it. We, we said, this guy is the next Amir. He's the leader of the jihadi movement. We knew that. We knew bombs had gone off in Tanzania and Kenya. So, so a lot of things were happening. And then um, I just realized, like, you know, I don't know my religion. I haven't studied Arabic. I haven't studied Islamic studies. So I decided that I would go and study. Now, I thought about going to Saudi but I was too old by this time, 25. And, you know, they want, they want the brains when they're malleable. Mm-hmm. You don't want them when you're older. So I couldn't go to Saudi. Egypt was too expensive at the time. And it just so happened that the mosque that my dad ran, they were building a, a dome and a minaret. And some of the laborers that were working there, there were two brothers from Syria. And they heard that I wanted to go and study. So they said, hey, you should go and live I have a house there. Go, you can live there. I won't charge you rent because you're going to study Islam. And it's mm-hmm. so I would end up studying, uh, spending two years in Syria. Was before you get into that, just it seems like an uncommon reaction to someone who's radicalized that 9 11 happens and you go, hmm, I need to understand this better. Yeah. Did you run across anybody else who had a similar reaction? Well, there's, so there's that whole spectrum of the opposite as well. Those, so, you know, the saying, uh, and I always, the saying goes, like, especially those who, have, who end up becoming hostile to Islam, is everything I learned about Islam, I learned on 9-11. Whereas for me, it was everything I learned Islam was not, I learned on 9-11. <laughs> 